It was a Tallahassee auction because they had taken it from a drug dealer. Okay, so this is how a Ferrari 308 led to the nation's largest traffic ticket defense firm. I went to law school, uh, University of Miami. Did pretty well, top of my class, law review. Supposed to go the traditional route, go work for a big law firm. I interviewed with a couple, and I still remember one of the, one of the guys I interviewed with, and even though, I mean, my grades were perfect, and my test scores, I had one of the highest bar test scores. This guy I interviewed with, I still remember, he ended up being a U.S. attorney, Kendall Coffey, who got dismissed for biting a girl at a strip club. He said, you know what, Mark, uh, I'm impressed with your credentials and stuff, but I just have a feeling you don't play well with others. <laughs> so I ended up going to work for a, a mid-sized firm. I made some decent money and I was 26, 27. And instead of doing the smart thing, which would be put a down payment on a condo, because I was paying rent at some dump, I bought a 308. Not brand new, close to brand new, but I don't like buying brand new. I actually bought it from the Department of Transportation. It was a Tallahassee auction because they had taken it from a drug dealer, but it only had 600 miles on it. And the thing, thing was perfect. I did search under the door panels and everything for anything extra, but no, nothing was there. I've always been a car guy put myself through college street racing in a Z28, but this is, at the time, my, my dream car. And I drove it like I stole it. And I amassed so many tickets. I got one on the highway. It's probably a buck, like a buck 10 and a 55 uh, highway patrol. They usually do their job. That's their job is speeding. One of the problems was this ticket was gonna put me over the limit. If you get uh, 12 points within 12 months, you lose your license, you get suspended for 30 days, if you get 24 points in 36 months, you lose it for a year. So I, I had some real exposure here. I had to win this case. This one would have cost me a minimum, depending upon, because it could have been four to six points. It could have been uh, an 18 month license suspension. And I got to drive to work. I mean, I, I, and I'm not gonna not drive. So uh, this was really important. This, one, this was one I had to win. So I hit the books. No one's ever really taken the time to investigate how do you fight a traffic ticket? Because I found out in addition to the statutes, chapter 316 in Florida dictates what the different laws are regarding traffic, red lights, speeding, careless driving. But in the radar section, it says that the Department of Highway Safety Motor Vehicles is tasked with writing rules about how radar should be maintained and calibrated. And those rules or in a, an administrative code, separate from all these books. Back then, of course, we didn't have the computers and I couldn't, you know, I actually had to go to the law library, track down the administrative code. I found the one, the, the Department of Highway Safety Motor Vehicles Administrative Code. It was so dusty back there, I couldn't breathe. I pull this book out, blow it off, wipe it off, and 15B209, I still remember, lists all the things they have to do to properly calibrate a radar unit before they use it and during the time they use it. So equipped with this book, uh, I go to court and the officer starts to testify. And he said, uh, I observed this gentleman at a high rate of speed and I put my radar on and I go, objection, foundation. Which means before he can say a speed, he's got to lay the proper foundation of how he did it. And the judge is like, what do you mean? He was operating his radar. I said, well, there's quite a few things he has to do before he can say what the radar speed is. Just like, what are you talking about? So, well, officer, do you have a daily log? He's like, what are you talking about? I said, well, the administrative code says you have to keep a daily log of the tests that you perform on the unit. You have to test it at the beginning of your shift and you have to do both an external and internal test, meaning you use a, t a tuning fork on the outside and then you just, an internal test, just make sure all the lights light up and everything. And by the way, the tuning fork also has to be certified by a separate company. And we'll get to that officer, but let's just talk about your daily log. Do you have your daily log? I don't need that. Yeah, you do. And the judge is like, Mr. Gold, what are you talking about? I said, 15B209, it's right here, judge, take a look. Judge is like, is, that, is this still good law? 
I said, yeah, Judge, it's good law. Feel free to shepherdize it. Shepherdizing is something we do where you put a law in and you see if any laws have changed it. All right. And I said, I've done it, Judge. I've shepherdized it. Here's the results. It's still good law. So let's talk about it then, officer. Did you test your unit at the beginning of the shift and keep a log of the results of the test? No, I did not. I didn't think I had to. Okay. Did you keep a log of the test after each citation was issued? No, I did not. I didn't know I had to. Do you have the tuning forks for the unit? He goes, yes, I do. I said, do you have the calibration certificate for the tuning forks? He says, I didn't know I had to have those. I said, Mr. Gold, is this, is this all for real? I said, Judge, it's all for real. Here's the law. I move to dismiss. Motion granted. So that was the beginning. Word got around. I started doing some for other guys at the office. And just one after another, one rule, there's just so many intricacies and little rules that no one knows about. And no one ever called these troopers to task or officers or deputies. Nobody called them to task. Either they would pay them or they'd let elect traffic school, you know, but nobody actually thought they would come in. It's pretty funny. You go to traffic court and you'll hear excuses like, you remember back when Domino's, if they didn't deliver your pizza in 30 minutes, it was free. So you would actually hear people come defend themselves in court and say, judge, I'm a Domino's driver. What am I supposed to do? You know, I was going to have to pay for the pizza. Not a legal defense. One thing led to another. And uh, I said, you know what? I think there's some money to be made here. I asked my dad for a loan to open my own office. And being the typical Jewish dad, he's like, I didn't send you to law school to chase traffic tickets. But regardless, he lent me the money anyway. And kind of the rest is history. We now have uh, 40 offices. Uh, we cover the entire state of Florida, the entire state of California with brick and mortar. And we have 300 affiliates across the country, as you know, who've been vetted. The real problem is, yeah, you can Google. If you're in another state that we don't cover, you can Google and maybe find someone. But we vetted these guys. We've worked with them. We know they do a good job. And we, we continue to grow. Actually, we just opened our first Georgia office in Valdosta. And uh, we're, we'll be growing here in Georgia and, and continuing. Carly gets more out of your car. Unlock hidden functions. Personalize your car with the coding function. Scan, individualize, code. It's easy with the Carly app and adapter. Diagnostics, maintenance, coding, and used car checks. Carly. More than one million satisfied customers worldwide.